my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys. And today we're going to be talking about the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Burroughs. This book was published a while ago in 2009 I believe but recently it was made into a Netflix original movie starring a ton of fantastic actors from Game of Thrones down to Nabby, the IT crowd. And so because of that movie tie-in, now this book is everywhere again. I picked up this copy at Walmart. Everywhere I go, there's copies of it. And that made me curious because the title alone, while a mouthful, um, definitely has a bit of intrigue to it. And especially for me, a literary society sounds fun. I would join one. <laughs> Towards the end of the video, I'll touch on the film a bit because I did watch that after I finished the book. And I'll just, uh, just kind of let you know if it holds up to the book how true to it they stayed. All right, so let's just get on into it. This book is composed entirely of letters. Whenever I hear that about a book, it makes me a little weary at first, and I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna love it, because sometimes that's just not the best way to tell a story, but um, it worked for this. It worked really well. So first of all, we meet Juliet Ashton. She is the heroine of our story, if you will. We meet her through a series of letters um, that she is writing to a ton of different characters. Um, and it takes place in the 1940s, shortly after the German occupation of Guernsey, which is an island in the English Channel, came to an end during the Second World War. So one day, quite out of the blue, Juliet receives a letter in the mail from a man named Dossie Adams who lives in Guernsey. He's writing to her because somehow a book of hers ended up in his possession. And it's by a writer named Charles Lamb. And so he's writing to tell her that the book means so much to him and that um, he related a lot to Charles Lamb. And there's a book in particular that the author had also written that Dossie's trying to get his hands on a copy of. So he's writing to ask Juliet if she knows of any good bookstores in London because that's where she lives. She of course is delighted to hear from him and decides to take it as kind of a mission to go and find this book for him. So she goes into her favorite booksellers and she asks about it and he tells her that while he doesn't have a copy of it on hand he could probably pretty easily find it for her. So she explains the situation to him and gives him Dossie's address so that when he does find it, he can send it off to him. And then the shop owner says, you know, uh, we don't have that one, of course, but we do have this other one by Charles Lamb. And she's like, perfect, thank you. So she buys that one and she sends it to Dossie as a gift. Um, he's very touched by that and that kind of kicks off their back and forth exchange, which carries on for quite a while. So on the other side of things, we get to know some of the other people in Juliet's life through these letters. We get to know about a suitor that she has. His name is Markham V. Reynolds. He's a American. He's a rather aggressively pursuing her. And um, she eventually sort of gives into it and allows herself to be swept off her feet by him. We also learn of her two dearest friends, Sophie and Sydney. They're a brother and sister, and Sydney is now um, Juliet's publisher because um, that's kind of what she's made her career out of. She published a couple books beforehand, but what really kicked off her career was a book called Icky, Icky, <laughs> was a book called Iggy Bigger Staff Goes to War. And what that is, is it's a series of essays that she wrote and published in newspapers during the war. And then she put them together in a book full of essays and it was a hit. So it's kind of skyrocketed, skyrocketed her to, um, you know, a pretty good level of success. The problem Juliet's having now is she's having trouble thinking up what she wants her next book to be about. Um, and she just, she can't quite find the right topic. But while she's communicating with Dossie, she learns, he mentions in his letter, the first letter actually, um, that he was a member of a group called the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. So of course that's quite the icebreaker and that leads her to asking him what it's about. And so he explains it. You see, Dossie himself is a pig farmer and um, when the Germans came to Guernsey, they um, 
kept really strict records of the livestock. And the people weren't allowed to eat it. It was used to feed the soldiers. And so they figured out a way to trick one of the German soldiers into thinking that a pig had died when it hadn't. And they managed to hide that pig away. So once they've successfully done that, Dossie and his neighbors decide they're going to cook a dinner. And everyone sort of brought something to contribute. Um, one of the older gentleman neighbors, he brings a potato peel pie. Um, the kind of eccentric Isola, she brings uh, liquor that she's made herself. And Amelia lets them have it at her house. So they're neighbors who get together and they just want to, for one night, forget that the war's going on. That leads them to breaking curfew, and then when um, a bunch of them are on the way home, they run into two German soldiers who are very upset and are wondering where they were and what they were doing and where they're going. So they say that they are going home and that they had been meeting for a, um, a meeting. It was, you know, they don't want to say a, a dinner party because that's not allowed. One of the girls, being rather quick thinking, she says that they're a book club. Thinking on the fly, she says we're the Guernsey Literary. And then the old man pipes in and says, and Potato Peel Pie Society. <laughs> and the Germans are like, are you though? <laughs> and he's looking through his sheets and he's like, we don't have any record of this society. So after a while, the Germans kind of get frustrated. They say, fine, go home. We will put this um, society on our list and one of the soldiers will come to the meetings and make sure there's no, you know, tomfoolery, that it's just straight up a book club. So that only lasts for a couple weeks, the German soldier coming, because after a while he's just bored and he's like, okay, this is, this is what it looks like it is. And they're kind of left to their own devices. And during this time, they become more than neighbors, they become a family. And um, Juliet, she's just really um, taken with this and after a while she decides she wants to go to Guernsey and she's been offered a job to write some um, articles about sort of life after the war and she thinks this would be a great topic to write it on. So she starts communicating with other members of the society getting a bit of info and then she gets to the point where she's like this is it I have to go. So her her Sooner, <laughs> Markham V. Reynolds, he's kind of like, oh, do you have to go? Like, this seems a bit silly, but she's like, yes, I have to go. So she goes and she meets up with the society members. They're all waiting for her at the pier, and it's just a, a really sweet book. It's light and a quick read, and it's just a feel-good story, honestly, from beginning to end. Once Juliet's there, she meets... Um, Kit, who is the four-year-old daughter of one of the original members um, of the society, in fact the one who was quick thinking enough to come up with literary society on the spot, and her name was Elizabeth, but she's not on the island anymore, and Juliet doesn't really know why or where she is, and she doesn't ask right away, of course, um, and she just, she begins to build her relationships with all these people, and she just ends up loving it, and loving them. The book's just about so much friendship and strength through hardship and how important it is during hard times to have people around you who love you and build you up and keep you sane. And that's what those people did for each other. So if you don't want any spoilers, now's the time to click off. That should give you a good idea of what the story's all about. And now we'll we'll get into a bit of the spoilers. I'm not going to give too many spoilers though just because there's no twist you know it's not a mystery it's kind of like I said just a feel-good story so but I'll let you know how it ends for those of you who are curious and then like I said we'll talk about the film a bit so after a while Juliet feels like she's close enough with everyone to be able to bring up the topic of Elizabeth and this is the one portion of the book that's not quite as light-hearted and feel-good as the rest so Juliet learns that Kit um, Elizabeth's four-year-old daughter um, was fathered by a German and um, 
what had happened was Elizabeth had met him and she fell in love. And, you know, they had plans that once the war was over, he was going to come back and they were going to live together and raise their family. But one night that German soldier is caught going home late after curfew and he's shipped away back to Germany. And when he's on the boat, the boat's hit by a torpedo and he's killed. Shortly after that, Elizabeth, who was always kind of a rebel, always kind of fighting uh, the injustices of the war, she finds a young boy on the side of the road who's very ill, he's starving, he's going to die. So she decides that she can't just sit idly by and let that happen. So one night, under the cover of nightfall, she decides she's going to take this boy to the hospital. When she goes to do it, she gets seen and the boy is killed on the side of the road immediately and she's sent to a German camp. And so it's been about two years at the point that we're reading from when Elizabeth got taken. Over time, they get in touch with a girl named Remy who was in the camp with Elizabeth, and Remy passes on the news that Elizabeth was killed. Again, while standing up for what she thought was right. Uh, but unfortunately, that time it cost her her life. But on the one hand, at least she died doing what was in her heart, which was to stand up for the people who didn't really have voices. So after that happens, Juliet gets it in her mind that she's going to adopt Kit. She's going to move to Guernsey and adopt Kit. And uh, her parents were killed during the war, so she knows what it's like to be an orphan, and she doesn't want that for Kit. Even though Kit has a ton of very loving and caring people who are taking care of her, because all the sort of neighbors were taking turns taking her in, um, Juliet wants to give her home. So at one point, Markham V. Reynolds <laughs> comes to see Juliet. It's been about two months now since she's left London, and he's kind of like, okay, it's time to come home now. And she sends him away. She tells him, no, um, this is my life now. I, I need to stay here. She's been inspired. She's decided she's going to write her next book on Elizabeth. Um, you know, on Guernsey, but also tell Elizabeth's story while she's doing it. And um, Markham, of course, he's hurt. His feelings are hurt. He was crazy about Juliet, but eventually he does, he leaves. And Juliet gets down to the business of adopting Kit, and eventually she is successful. Um, then shortly after that, um, well, throughout this whole time, she's been getting closer to Dossie, who was the, you know, the reason she ended up there in the first place, and they just keep getting closer and closer, and then once she eventually ends things with Markham, she feels free to, um, really go for it with Dossie, and she ends up going over to his place and asking him to marry her, which I thought was a pretty sweet ending. And, um, yeah, I loved it. it. It just, it made me feel good. I smiled from beginning nearly to end. Um, there's some cliches in there, like Dossie, while he's a pig farmer, which I loved. He's also, you know, that sort of strong and silent type cliche. But in a book like this, the cliches kind of work. Whereas, you know, in a more intense book, it would just be ridiculous. But in this book, it works. And, um... It's just a fun, nice read, which you'll see soon enough is very different from next week's book we're going to be talking about. That book's a little dark, <laughs> which I love too. Anyway, so now we'll talk about the movie for a second. I thought the movie was fantastic. I loved all the actors in it. Just, I will say a lot of small details are changed from the story to the movie. The heart of the story is still the same. Like, it tells the same story. It just... There's just slight differences, and some of them have me thinking, like, but why? <laughs> like, there were just some little things, and I was like, why did you change that? Another thing was two big characters in the book were her two friends, Sophie and Sydney, and Sophie's not even in there, so it's just Sydney. And in the book, that kind of translates to, like, Juliet and Sophie were the same age, and they were, like, school friends. And then Sydney was kind of the older brother, and Juliet got close to him through that. Whereas, if you take Sophie out of the equation, as the film did, 
It still presses how Sydney and Juliet have been close friends for many, many years. But it's obvious that he's older than her. Like, she's, say, in her mid-30s. He looks to be in his mid-40s. So then, <laughs> how have they been, like, how did they meet each other when they were children with that big of an age gap? I'm, I'm overthinking this, I know, but I just wondered about that. <laughs> Whereas in the book, it made more sense because Sophie was the connector between the two of them. So yeah, just little things like that. Little things changed that I didn't understand why they changed it, but I'm sure they have their reasons. Anyway, I love them both. The movie's great. The book's great. I think both can definitely be enjoyed. So there you have it. That's the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Have you read the book? Have you seen the movie? If you have, I'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you on Monday. Bye.